from the Clark Ford Studio in Oxford, Mississippi, MBW Digital proudly presents the Oxford Exxon Podcast. I'd say thanks for tuning in, but why am I going to give you a round of applause for something you're supposed to do, to be frank? And now, here are your hosts, Chase Parm. And broadcast school has really paid off. And Neil McCrady. I deserve to be on TV. Friday edition of the Oxford Exxon podcast, Chase Parham in the Clark Ford studio, doing things a little differently instead of a guest, Neil and I did a Q&A at Funkies with the questions from the message board, a bit of a fire away Friday getting to you and getting loaded a little early here on Thursday night as we get done, taking a lot of questions about the, uh, the potential news for uh, the Ole Miss Chancellor situation, because there's some football questions, some baseball questions, basketball and much more on the show. Have a good time at Funkies on the Oxford Square. And speaking of Funkies, they're going to open at 10 o'clock on Saturday prior to Ole Miss and Texas A&M. So you can head on over an hour before kickoff for that one. They're going to serve $4 red and blue daiquiris and other specials for you this weekend. And if you're coming into town, you always need to stop at the Oxford Exxon Highway 6 West in Oxford. Speed Pass Plus app here for Thanksgiving. They're going to smoke your turkey for you. If you so choose, they will do that for you. Take a hassle out of your Thanksgiving there at all Blue Sky locations, including the Oxford Exxon. Get the bottomless refill for $0.49. Cents. Get the mobile rewards app and much more with the Oxford Exxon. Of course, when I'm coming to you from the Clark Ford studio, you know about Clark Ford because it's in Amory, Highway 25 South, 662-257-1900. Because you give Corey a call, you get a quote within 15 minutes. You shop it around. You take the quote. You're going to get the best deal And then right at the end, right before you sign the papers, tell them you heard about him on the podcast, $500 off there with Clark Ford if you mention the podcast. We always thank Blue Delta Jeans for the trivia questions. They're a huge part of our Thursday nights. And we've got more coming from MPW Digital, a beer garden. We've had a soft verbal presented by Dead Soxy. We've had a greatest pod in the South presented by Cathead Vodka this week as well. So huge week on MPW Digital. Check rebelgrove.com also for plenty more coverage and Ole Miss and Texas A&M Saturday from College Station, Texas at 11 a.m. And then basketball that afternoon in Oxford against Western Michigan. So without further ado, knowing myself, answering questions at Funky's Thursday night here on the Oxford Exxon podcast. Today, Ole Miss had either beaten Auburn or Texas A&M. I can't remember which. And you had reported that Jeffrey Vitter, the Ole Miss Chancellor's contract, would not be extended because at that point it was the midway point of his tenure and you said that no matter when it was over it was a lame duck deal without an extension i reported that he had been informed that his contract would not be renewed when it expired on june the 30th 2020 so we are a few months later and it appears that that time period has arrived we are hearing more and more, kind of a little bit of background for people who had not heard this previously. The IHL, who handles the, the, the all the president and chancellor jobs in Mississippi, they had a meeting scheduled November 15th in, at, at Ole Miss on campus at the University of Mississippi. That was then moved to the boardroom in Jackson instead. They took it off campus. I was told by some November sources November 15th that, is Thursday. Yeah, I was told okay. by some sources that basically optically was part of the reason for that, that optics – of discussing something along those lines while on campus was something they did not want to do. And I'm hearing from multiple people, you're hearing from multiple people, that there's a chance this thing doesn't even make the meeting. It probably will not make the meeting and that we are nearing the end of the uh, the tenure of Jeffrey Vitter as chancellor. Well, you've done more reporting on this than I have since the original report, um, which I am preparing my victory lap as we speak, but regardless, um, you're going to holler at, her, holler at a certain uh, reporter that, yeah, that questioned I'm, you a little bit. I'm really sad that she's not there anymore because it would be it would have more steam if she were still there. You're upset she's a little bit. Whatever's going on, frankly, um, but you've done more reporting on that since that day. What I was told this morning, and you feel free to elaborate because I think you know more probably details than I do, is uh, the people that are in charge of making this decision would prefer that this decision be finalized and announced publicly uh, prior to that meeting. I don't think they really want it to be an item on the quote agenda end quote at that meeting. I think they're ready to move forward. So um, I know there's been people that have said it could happen tomorrow. 
tomorrow being Friday, which is today, if you're hearing this today, because we're, it's a podcast. I haven't heard anything to, to negate that. That's what I was told was as early as next Thursday, next Friday, actually as early as next Friday. So I guess that's conceivable that it's this Friday, but I, I didn't have that specific of a timetable. And frankly, I didn't, I didn't. I guess it's not very good reporting. I didn't ask for a specific day. Yeah, we can ironclad report that they have been in some semblance of negotiations to uh, to end this, to 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 move forward from the uh, from the chancellor position, and it, a lot of it just depends on when that gets done. I don't know how detailed of a process that is. I, I I don't know how difficult of a process that is as far as back and forth and back and forth. Because the other interesting part of this is. There's things scheduled every single day. I mean, it's things where you'll have to change some schedulings around. You'll have to have backup plans. I mean, we have residences involved. I mean, there's a lot going on here whenever this thing happens. So I don't know if it's immediate. I don't know if it's, hey, let's set a date off of this thing. I, I don't have those answers as of right now. However, very, very strong sourcing saying that they are moving forward as fast as possible on something that, frankly, has been inevitable for a while. I mean, when you look at the university as a whole, we can talk about enrollment being down and different things, but in every way that there's morale around this, from fundraising to enrollment to just the job of the chancellor kind of being the overall focus of the university, it's been a failure. And when that happens, I mean, really some credit here, as much as everybody likes to rag on them, to the IHL, because it does appear that that committee and that board is is moving forward pretty quickly from the point of it not being extended, it not being renewed, however you want to call that, without a whole lot of ego involved. Because I'll be honest, when I first heard it, I thought they might ride this thing out straight from an ego standpoint. I mean, at the risk of sounding cliche and being really short with it, money talks. And so when you can't raise money, that's a, a major issue at a public institution, any public institution, Ole Miss included. And when your enrollment dips, even when it dips just a little, people can spin and say, well, you know, the campus is crowded. Um, enrollment needed to drop. That stuff doesn't resonate particularly well. It, you don't hear that and think, oh, yeah, you're right. You hear that and think that's spin. Your spin odometer, your spin, it goes off. Your radar goes off. And then when you talk about, there's a lot of talk about the in freshman class of 2019 being potentially dramatically down. Well, you can't allow that to happen. And if that's going to happen, well, then you've got to get ahead on 2020. And you got to, what is the problem? Is all of that Jeffrey Vitter's problem? Well, of course not. But at some point, I always use the Fortune 500 company example. And I don't know why. I've never worked for a Fortune 500 company in my life. If a Fortune 500 company is having problems, having PR problems, having morale problems, having money problems, whether it's the CEO's fault or not, you typically hit a reset button, and the reset button usually includes the CEO. At the end of the day, it's up to him. So that's where this thing is. Um, again, we're safe in reporting all that. I feel very confident, and it. it's coming from everywhere. I mean... Right after lunch today, rumors started going rampant. They were, I mean, when I say everywhere, I mean throughout town, throughout Oxford, throughout the university in every single facet. I mean, it was, it was blowing up with uh, things talking about tomorrow, early into next week, just before that meeting because that had kind of been the date we talked about. And then as we can sort of spin this forward a little bit. I want to say this real quick, not yeah. to interrupt you. Don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't want to mess up your train of thought. One of the things that has led to this, I was told today, is the leadership at Mississippi State, Mark Keenum, is so completely different than the leadership at Ole Miss. And a lot of Ole Miss people have looked at what's happened at Mississippi State, specifically with the way that Keenum has done some things, and said, we've got to do better. So kudos to Mark Keenum. You and I have talked about this. I don't really want to get, make this about me or about my kid at all because I don't. My kid's a high school senior, and I've watched the recruiting difference. And this is not strictly on Vitter. You know, Vitter can't be responsible for recruiting high school kids. But he oversees a university, and the difference in the recruiting effort of 
uh, uh, academic recruiting between Ole Miss and Mississippi State is profound. It's it's profound. You've seen it firsthand, and then we have several mutual acquaintances that have experienced something very similar. Is where we are at this point. So, no, it's everything. I mean, it, it, it's it, it has been a complete disaster from everything PR wise and marketing with this this chancellor and this administration for more than a calendar year for most part. I mean, honestly, so. That's where that is. Um, moving forward, what this looks like is it could be a bit of a process. I mean, everybody talks about, you know, last time that this happened when, when when Dan Jones left, Morris Stocks was the interim for a while. I've heard his name just as pure speculation. People going, well, that would be someone that makes sense because they've been real careful with the interim gig here in a lot of ways because – I think you should get it. think I should get it? I do. You you have become sort of the voice of the people. Um uh, I think you should be the mayor. I've said this for a while, but the mayor's post is not open right now. And a friend of yours, too. So, Yeah, and she's a friend of mine. But So I think in, in light of that, you should be the acting chancellor. So what they want to do is they want to bring somebody in. I've heard this multiple people, and I don't know who it's going to be. I mean, no clue. But who is not going to join in the power struggle for the job. You right, know what I mean? Right, you want right. somebody to keep... Keep everything between the lines and, and drive the car. But Someone who's going to be the interim who wants to be the interim. John L. Smith is what they're looking yeah, for here. Yeah. They want a John L. Smith. They don't want they don't want someone who's going to rock the boat. Again, and, again, that's a process. Ole Miss has to form sort of its search committee. They have to recommend people to the IHL. I mean, we're talking – it wouldn't shock me if, if we're, this is a 6- to 12-month process to get the, the new acting chancellor in. So just from a – for people that aren't really familiar with the way this works, this does take a while. This is not going to be a new thing. The time frame I heard today was six to nine months, which in academia means 12 months. Yeah, right. So if it were NCAA months. parlance, it would mean six years. But in academia, it means, I mean, it means nine to 12 months is what it means. Next fall, when the freshman class arrives, you'd love to have a chancellor on campus that he or she can go introduce himself or herself to that, that class. The interesting thing is this thing is going to, more so than in most universities, you know, a lot of times the chancellor job, the president job comes open and nobody knows who any of these people are and it's just sort of, hey, put the academic guy in there and we'll learn his name. That doesn't appear to be the case here. This feels like this is going to become some semblance of a coaching search in the SEC or something as we move forward. I mean, there's like hot board candidates as we uh, as we as we we the other guy's not even fired yet, and like all the all the sites are getting ready to to, to ignite the hot boards. Yeah, but RebelGrove.com apparently is not going to have a hot board. We're going to start a campaign. Is that correct? <laughs> because because my boy Parham has decided that he's he's got a candidate. He said he's he said publicly today that he's prepared to endorse and push for and what was the word promote? Did I use candidate? the word promote? I, I don't, don't think remember. I used the word promote. I read it and I said, "Look at him all grown up. He's we're, we're going to start politicking now. The mayor is getting ready to push his weight behind a candidate right here on the message board. So go ahead, let's launch it today. The the president of the University of Arizona is your guy. So start the campaign. The, the floor is yours. This podcast is brought to you in part by Dead Soxy. DeadSoxy.com. You got to try these socks. They're phenomenal. I've been wearing them since back in the summer. It's the best dress sock I've ever worn, but you should go try them. You have nothing to lose. If you try them, you don't like them, uh, tell Dead Soxy you didn't like them. They'll send you your money back, and you can keep the sock. So go try them. If you don't love them, like I said, Dead Socks, you refund your money. Uh, see if they stay on. See if they stay soft. See if they're the best dress sock you've ever worn. They're made from bamboo. They're premium socks that stay up. Listen, uh, the guys at, at Dead Socks, see, they're not reinventing the wheel. They've just created a better mousetrap. Simple as that. Uh, they're Mississippi guys that grew up in Mississippi. They went to Ole Miss. Um, it's a product driven company. They are very serious about making the best dress sock you've ever worn. So go to deadsoxy.com, D E A D S O X Y.com. Uh, it's a fantastic site, great selection, uh, full length socks, the, uh, no show socks. So check them out, make your order, enter rebel grove in the, uh, in the promo code. 
Rebel Grove at checkout, you'll save 25% off your order. And again, if you don't like them, they'll refund your money and you can keep the socks. This column, this podcast, I should say, also brought to you by Pinnacle Trust. Pinnacle Trust is based in Madison, Mississippi, but it represents clients in 24 states, has advisors in three states. Founded in 1997, Pinnacle Trust provides detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much more. At Pinnacle Trust, investing is treated like a commodity and decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. So regardless of your level of wealth, Pinnacle Trust will sit down with you, listen to your goals, study your expenses, and put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan. Cookie cutter financial planners put you in a box. It's not what Pinnacle Trust does. They build a box just for you. To learn more about Pinnacle Trust, go to Pintrust.com. That's P-I-N-N Trust.com. Mention you heard about Pinnacle Trust on the podcast. You'll get 10% off your first year's fee. Podcast also brought to you by the Weston Jackson. Restore serenity to your soul by visiting Soul Spots, the ultimate luxury spa experience in downtown Jackson. Indulge in personalized massages, signature facials, soothing body treatments, and much more on their extensive spa list. Escape from the everyday and rejuvenate yourself in their luxury spa today. And then gather at Estelle Wine Bar and Bistro right there in the Weston Jackson. Sip on a creative craft cocktail or enjoy their curated wine list. It's open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Chef Caden's mission is to connect guests with the community through local partnerships. So gather at Estelle tonight. The podcast also brought to you in part by John Edwards of Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. If you've been thinking about that golf trip with the guys or maybe the anniversary trip uh, with your special someone, whether you've dreamed of playing St. Andrews or sitting at a cafe in Paris, you need to talk to John Edwards before you try to do it yourself. Be aware also that uh, you can uh, you can go ahead and get started on booking your spring break. In fact, you should because space is filling up on cruises and resorts in Florida and the Caribbean and guaranteed reserved tee times at golf courses in Scotland and Ireland for uh, summer 2019 are becoming less available by the day. John's a part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows John to supply his clients with added values and unique benefits that are simply not available to other travelers. John traveled the globe for 37 years before getting into the travel business, so he knows the extra attention needed to make a special trip, one that creates a lifetime of unique memories. So give him a call, 901-494-3387, or send him an email, jedwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients can save $50 off the first book trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. It's someone that has been mentioned to me for a while. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to phrase this correctly since we're not in a studio. We're actually around people right now as I'm, as I'm doing that. <laughs> and you're having a daiquiri. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Um, so Bobby Robbins, the president of the University of Arizona, um, had a, has applied for the position before. Um, when Jeffrey Vitter got it, he was a candidate. And I want to tell you to talk through this a little bit because it's going to be a name that yeah, we're sure. All, it's going to be a name that we're all going to hear for a while. I mean, until a chancellor is hired or Bob Robbins is no longer involved, it's going to be the name that that happens a lot. I, I think a lot of Ole Miss people uh, like his his story, his resume. The fact that, frankly, he wants to be there, that's something that's important to a lot of people. I mean, he's, he's applied this before. It's not like it's new. So he's currently at Arizona. He's been there a while. Previously, he served. Um, he was the president and CEO of the Texas Medical Center in Houston from 2012 to 2017. He's been basically the chairman or the head or whatever of uh, the cardiothoracic surgery center at Stanford University, the Stanford School of Medicine. I mean, we're talking – pretty weighty things in the uh, in, in the medical field. And let me kind of take a t- take a step there because a lot of people have said, well, he didn't get the job at Ole Miss or I don't even I don't even necessarily think he got to the finals. But he didn't get the job at Ole Miss the last time because of a couple different things. Number one, he had a resume that was very similar to Dan Jones, medical center, a lot of different things that they were just exiting. And then also at the time, he had never been in the head of a place with an undergraduate curriculum an undergraduate body of work and now he's been in arizona he's made waves he's done a very 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 good job he's beloved there right Yeah, he's beloved there he's done a really good job i mean he, he's getting he's catching some flack for kevin someone but the president shouldn't be judged by a football coach that's one of the dumber things i've ever heard so 
Um, if anything, athletically, it's been a positive because he's been huge. You'll like this. He's been huge on players finding a way to use their likenesses, to player rights, to athletes making money. He's he, he's very forward thinking in a lot of those areas. Who is the quarterback? At, is, is it Khalil, Khalil Tate? Khalil Tate. Yeah. Okay. The, and I can't pronounce the the coach at Navy. It's Ken Neman. We all know who you're talking about. Ken so go M. Ahead. He's a good coach. Yeah. But he runs kind of a triple option veer sort of a thingy. And Khalil Tate said, that's, that's not what I came to Arizona to run. And the chancellor listened. Now, did Khalil Tate ultimately hire Kevin Sumlin? No. But the chancellor listened to the student athlete. And I think the student athlete should be listened to. Now, if you're hiring a chancellor based on athletics, well, it's already... You're making an egregious error You're there. You're screwing it up from the very get-go. Right. There's, there's more important things than athletics to be thinking about. Though athletics are, at the risk of sounding cliche, athletics are the front door to a university. It's one of Ole Miss's problems right now, is that football's the front door to a university in the last couple well, of That's part th- of the reason enrollment's down. It's a big part. It's a big part of the reason that... that Morale is down. Is that silly? Yeah, sure, but it is what it is, and it's not. It's not. This that's not exclusive to Ole Miss. That's everywhere. There's a reason that Alabama right now is bursting at the seams with Rhodes Scholars. It's it's not because and you're they, being literal. I'm being literal. It's it's not because they love Tuscaloosa. It's because they're winning, and winning's fun. So. Point being, those were the two things that had been negative toward Robbins. He is, I mean, it wasn't because of this, but he has fixed both those things since that point. Those are two no longer negatives on the resume. And it's just my opinion, just me talking, but I, I think I probably speak for a lot of people um, associated or having some sort of, of equity or stance for Ole Miss. We get a lot, well, you want an Ole Miss guy. And I, that, to me, that makes no sense. Find the best candidate, hire the best candidate, and let the, be, let the candidate do their job. Absolutely. I do think at times, because of the IHL and the system and the state, things get a little weird. It's not the worst thing to have some knowledge of process and how this state operates because it can be a little funky. No, sure. no pun intended at times. So he also kind of hits those things as well. UMC Medical Center degree, went to Millsaps for undergrad, with the Jones Community College, as a JUCO kid, Ole Miss not doing well in junior colleges right now. I, I, I just, I think that even though professionally and moving forward and athletics and and socially and and, and fundraising, he hits all those things. But then he also kind of has that story that's going to bring in a lot of in-state people that I, I think is going to galvanize kind of the base for Ole Miss as well. So it, it, this isn't one of those things where like one person kind of tells me, "Hey, look at this resume. This is the guy." As I've sort of researched him, and I have, I have reason to believe he would take the job. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. I mean, uh, look, I know you've got to be careful with sources and stuff. To your understanding, does he want the job? It is my understanding he would take the position. He makes a million dollars a year now. Yeah. Is it your understanding? And maybe you don't know this, and if the answer is I don't know, then you don't know. Can Ole Miss pay that? I have no idea. I have not. And, and now, look, we're, I mean, there is no process. We're not, we're not even early in the process. There is no process to some extent. Yeah. I mean, I know a few things, but i got to be careful. Yeah. Um, I've not heard that it's a detriment okay. to the process. Okay. Let's put it that way at this point. Um, Will he go th- – because, listen, if I'm him, if I'm him, I've been through the interview process before. At some point, your resume is your body of work. Is he going to go through a process and interview and potentially get rejected? Because I'm not, if I'm him, this isn't an Ole Miss comment. This is a, I, I would not interview for that job. Well, because there's a difference in being an acting president, acting chancellor, whatever, versus being the head of a medical center. That's a whole different deal when you apply for a gig. I mean, honestly, he's got to be careful that people at Arizona don't go, hey, what, what in the world's going on in Mississippi with you right now? Right. Oh, uh, uh, not even a matter of being careful. It's, 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 I mean, I'm not playing on your words, but yes, you don't interview for the job. If you want me, hire me. And, do, and, and does the IHL, does it operate that way? And I, I, I don't know that answer. It should if that's what it takes, but well, I don't know Well, that was the my answer. next question, and, and 
that to me is where the whole thing gets really kind of problematic is how does what is the process if you decide as an institution that this is the guy we want let's go extend an offer let's get this done i don't know to me that's what's most interesting is what if you decide here's our guy let's go get him he wants it but he's not going to go through a dog and pony show it's and where you need hand raised guy, you need common sense guy, you need everybody to go. Hey, look! If this is the dude, if this is the best dude, if this is what we're doing, do it. Just go do it. I, I, this fig- is where my presence in fig- the room. Figure would, out a way for it to fit protocol moving forward. You've worked with me long enough that my yeah. presence in the room would would be. I, I would be, I would be a fulcrum in the room because I would say, "What are we doing? This is our guy, right?" He wants it. He's not going to go through a dog and pony show, and I don't blame him. He can't go through a dog and well, pony show. Or should show. he? Yeah. I mean, if I'm if I'm Robbins and Ole Miss calls me and says, "Will you interview?" My answer is on one condition: you fly out here, we interview in the ballroom of the Tucson Hilton or Marriott, depending on whichever chain you like the most. It's one hour. And then you leave with either an offer or don't call me again. Yeah, there's no finalist. There's no second interview. There's no nothing. It's yeah, one if, way or the other. If you interview one more person, I'm out. I'm not going through a process. So we've, we've heard his name. We've heard the guy at Nebraska that has IHL ties, I think. I mean, there's going to be some – some floating deals here, and this thing in the past has been pretty convoluted. So that's that, that's the scary part for Ole Miss. It's academia, they, man. That's what they do. They yeah. they don't take a three car parade and just line the cars up. They take a three car parade and have a committee to determine which car is going to go first. You got to form a committee, and then you need a subcommittee, and they need somebody to walk in. In my opinion, at the risk of like being hyperbolic they need somebody who walks in with the gravitas to say it's time for some just fundamental paradigm shift in thinking i think they've gotten away in what way? well what do you mean because i think in some ways the institution has gotten the old miss has gotten away from its identity from knowing who it is it's just kind of, it, it's, I don't know how to explain it. You, you have a beautiful campus in a really cool town, and there's a lot of tradition, and there's, there's the people who go to school there, for the most part, love it, and yet they've kind of gotten away from it. And, and I think at some point, you have to sort of be the, the, the guy that looks in the mirror and acknowledges Okay, this is who I am, and this is, this is what I'm going to be, and I'm going to I- embrace that and enhance that as much as I can. And I think there's been, from an academic recruiting standpoint, and I'm speaking somewhat out of school and somewhat with knowledge, this idea that you're going to be a Vanderbilt, a Northwestern, in a, at a public institution in Mississippi – is flawed. It's flawed. It doesn't mean that you can't be a great institution that people love, and it doesn't mean that you can't aspire to be as elite as possible academically. But you have to know who you are. And when you're the flagship school of the, of, of the state of Mississippi, and frankly you're getting your ass kicked in in-state academic recruiting, at some point, Chase, you've got to take a look in the mirror and say why. That's why I said that about Mark Keenum earlier. At some point, you have to say, hey, that guy's doing some good things. Let's quit making fun for a minute, and let's acknowledge that he's doing some good things, that he's beating us here. And how are they beating us? They're beating him with manpower and with commitment and with focus. And you have to start matching those things. And that's just, my, that's just one guy's opinion, and I'm, I'll freely admit that I could be wrong. 
the academic things that work when you're winning at football that were working a decade ago, that doesn't mean they're winning today. You got to retool, you got to figure it out, you got to figure out what your process is, your plan is, frankly, your objective is as you uh, as you move forward. So no, no doubt about that. I mean, Sean Payton at the end of every season goes and looks at what worked with his offense and what didn't. He does. He does a self scout. We always use these sports terms. At some point, a university has to do a self-scout. What's working? What's not working? Why is it not working? If Sean Payton never updates his playbook, opposing defenses catch up with it. He has to be creative. He has to be um, forward-thinking. Is that fair? I know it's a really, it's, it's a really baseline analogy, but... If you're, the, if, if you're the people running the Boston Red Sox right now, you just won the World Series, and you celebrate, and you break out the Dom Perignon, and you have some toast and stuff, but at some point, you, even you as the Boston Red Sox sit back and say, okay, what do we do wrong? What can we get better at? If you're not doing that, you're, take, you're going backwards. It was Budweiser and champagne bottles. Yeah. They, they had, they had, but, them. but when that's over... You, you do have to take, okay, how can we get better? Because there's a, probably a temptation in Boston to say, <laughs> man, we won 108 games. We can't get better. We're awesome. We're the best. Well, the Yankees are trying to catch you. And the Indians are trying to catch you. And the Astros are trying to catch you. So you better take a look and say, where can we get better? And I don't know. I, I just think with... I think with Ole Miss a little bit at times in different areas at the risk of just pissing people off, I think it's lost its way. The Oxford Exxon Podcast is also brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, look no further than Grenada Nissan. They have a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan vehicles. Go in, test drive one today at Grenada Nissan. Tell Gene and Sandy that you heard about Grenada Nissan on the podcast at rebelgrove.com you'll get rebel savings on top of the already great deals at grenada nissan it's grenada nissan usa.com and we're brought to you by harry alexander harry is an oxford-based remax legacy realty agent harry's been in oxford more than four decades no one knows the residential and condo market in oxford better than harry go to his site he'll prove it to you it's harryalexander.com Click on the Properties and Neighborhoods tab, filter through by what you are looking for, and then send him an email. It's ha at harryalexander.com. He'll take care of the rest. And the podcast is brought to you by Oxford University Bank. OUB is locally owned and operated right here in Oxford. When you deposit money at OUB, that money and the vast majority of the bank's profits go right back into the Oxford community. OUB gives you the comfort of home, all the benefits the big mega banks provide, all the technology and products you can want, all with the personal touch. When you call OUB, you speak directly with the live person, all without having to press 10 buttons and without a five-minute wait. OUB offers its customers the absolute best cash checking account. It's called Casasa, and with Casasa, OUB will pay uh, customers 2.5% interest on their balances up to $50,000. And with Casasa, ATM fees nationwide are refunded. OUB also offers online bill pay and mobile check deposit using its online app. OUB is also offering one-year CDs at 1.75% APY. They're offering three-year triple option CDs paying 2.01% APY. With the three-year term, customers can deposit once during the term, withdraw once during the term, and or bump the rate if OUB's three-year rate rises. To learn more about OUB, check out liveoxfordbankoxford.com or call 662 234-6668 OUB is FDIC insured. And the podcast is brought to you by Megan Phillips with LAH Real Estate. Megan is the person to call for all your real estate needs in the Birmingham area. With almost a decade of experience, Megan's knowledge and expertise can help you buy or sell your home today. So visit her website, MeganMPhillips.com. It's M-E-A-G-A-N-M-Phillips.com or call Megan at 205 602 Seven nine two nine again two zero five six zero two seven nine two nine. Ole Miss volleyball in town this weekend. Stephen McRoberts' team playing host to Tennessee at the Gillum Center six thirty on Friday. Admission is free. For more information, OleMissSports dot com. Uh, the Ole Miss women's and men's 
Basketball teams will be in action on Friday as well. The women's team open up the uh, exhibition season, if you will. They face Lemoyne Owen at 3 p.m. at the Pavilion at Ole Miss. Um, for more information, it's uh, OleMissSports.com. The men play at 6 against uh, Fayetteville State out of North Carolina. Uh, that is the uh, the one and only exhibition game for Ole Miss in, in men's action as well. The regular season begins on November the 10th against Western Michigan. You can get a uh, Rebel Flex Pass for $199 to all 16 men's home games. It's $199. OleMissTicks.com for more information. And a women's season ticket, Coach Yo and her team, you can get that for $50 by visiting OleMissTicks.com. That's OleMissTix.com. We'll take a, a little quick break there to give you your trivia question for the night. Brought to you by Blue Delta Jeans. Again, BlueDeltaJeans.com. Neil and I, Andy Kennedy, uh, all supporting Blue Delta. If you hadn't listened to that, Andy on our podcast this morning did a uh, fabulous job joining us for about a half hour or so. Ole Miss basketball starts the Kermit Davis era uh, officially tomorrow. Uh, sorry, from Saturday against Western Michigan. Your trivia question for the night, how many NCAA tournament games has Kermit Davis coached in during his career as a head Ooh. coach? So that is your uh, your question. Write it on a napkin if you're inside the building tonight. Get it to us up here, and you will win that trivia question from Blue Delta Jeans. I so, don't know the answer to that. Do you not? I don't. I had to look it up. I was struggling a little bit. So What? I, was, I mean, I, do you need to know the answer? I mean, do I need to tell you or what? I mean, I'm curious, but I'm, I'm not going to Google it. I noticed you didn't wear a pullover tonight. But in my mind, this is a pullover. It's not. It a pullover have a has to have a zip? Yeah. Okay. Shows you my... Uh, it's my, more of like a quarter zip as a pullover. That's it, what they're talking about, at least. It, it shows you my commitment but to But did fashion. you do that because of it today? No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to fundamentally change. We again get a uh, winner on our first uh, first guest tonight. Kermit Davis has been in seven NCAA tournament games during his uh, head coaching career. He did uh, five of those at Middle Tennessee, and he did two of those at where, Neil? Um, five at Middle Tennessee and two at – where was he before? It was like New Mexico State or something? I don't know. Idaho. Idaho, same difference. He was a vandal. NCAA tournament, 25-6 and six both seasons in 1989 and 1990 for, uh, for Kermit Davis. That was right before he got the A&M job that was a disaster. They were on probation and all sorts of stuff. So his, uh, his first gig there, then he went back to Idaho, and then he'd been Middle Tennessee since 2002, 2003. That's fairly remarkable in and of itself that he was at Middle in one spot for that long. 16 years. He talked about this the other day, that, that it's going to be a new thing for him starting Saturday. New parking place, new routine. It's not. It's going to be new for a lot. You know, they got a lot of newcomers on that team, but new for the coaching staff too because they've been in one place for a long time. The strangest of it, I mean, we ask Andy this, but it has to be a weird deal when he watches Ole Miss take the floor now. I mean, he has been their identity for more than a dozen years, and now he's sitting there watching somebody else not only run his program, but coach his kids. You know what? And look, I'm friends with him, and I like him, and I make no bones about the fact that I like Andy Kennedy a lot. His answer on Thursday morning on the Oxford Exxon podcast should shut up anybody and everybody who criticizes him. Like he said, he's got a lot of sweat equity in that program. Did it work to the level that he wanted it to work? Well, of course not. Um, but he wants those kids to do well. He wants that program to do well. He wants Kermit to do well. I thought his answer that he has a lot of faults, but that he doesn't think pettiness is one of them. If you can't appreciate that as a fellow human being, I don't know what to tell you. I, th I went back and listened to it. I thought it was a really, not only was it classy, I think it was, I don't think it, I know it was a, a very genuine thought. If it were up to Andy Kennedy, Ole Miss would have a special season. 
Say what you want about Andy. He gave Ole Miss everything he had. And he makes lots of self-deprecating jokes. And there were things that happened and stuff. But it wasn't lack of effort. And he did clean those things up after the first few years. I mean, you really didn't hear about it after, after no. the deal. He tried really hard. And as Kermit Davis has learned with DJ Jeffries and what appears to be with Chandler Lawson, getting that elite player here is hard. Now, I think he's got one. I think Sammy Hunter is an elite player. Oh, you like him? Oh, big time. I think he's an elite player. And had Where's he, that kid ranked if, it's, if he's American? Top 40. Oh, really? That high? Oh, yeah, he's a stud. Um, and, and they've got a real shot at a couple of five-star kids in a year. I'm not saying Kermit won't do it. I'm just saying it's hard. And Andy battled the, the t- Tad Smith for a long time. And it's not even about the Andy Kennedy debate. It's just I thought his answer today, if you listen to it, was really genuine and or yesterday, genuine and classy. And look, he's going to be a TV star. And for the long, and, and I think it's going to be a good thing for Ole Miss because it's going to be former Ole Miss coach Andy Kennedy, and he'll tell lots of funny jokes. And, and if Ole Miss, if it works out well for Ole Miss, Kermit Davis will do well. And Kermit and Andy like each other and have been friends for a long time. They scheduled each other for years. So I don't know. But yeah, I think Saturday afternoon, if he's watching Ole Miss in Western Michigan, it feels weird, sure. Let's jump into some of the questions I asked for on the board today. A lot of them are bitter related. We've went through a lot of that. We'll continue to go through that throughout the uh, the process. Uh, we be probably not a lot of sports uh, internet sites that cover Chancellor searches, but I have a hunch just because of the podcast and the reach and everything else. We'll probably stay fairly in tune to this throughout it uh, throughout the deal. So, um, nonetheless, I, I have very little. Uh, background in this but we'll figure it out as we uh as we go so you've not conducted a chancellor search I have before not, no i have no clue on half the protocol but we'll wing it it's fine uh all right question here i thought this was kind of interesting kind of fun after all the weighty stuff you can pick any three people who you covered while covering Ole miss affiliated with Ole Miss or not put them in a room at the same time they take truth serum right before oh. they walk into the room <laughs> who you picking and what are you asking <laughs> Two came to mind for me. So, well, Hugh Freeze. What in the hell happened with Mike Sheridan? Absolutely. That is question one. Take me through that meeting. What happened? Barney Farrar. Oh, okay. Well, elaborate. Did did who talked you into taking the fall? Who told you to take the fall? You don't think that was just a personal decision based off a of code? I think it was a personal decision based off code, but I think there were some promises made that probably weren't lived up to. And then my third might be, it might be Matt Luke. And the question would simply be, that day that you were about to go to South Carolina, when you talked to Ross. The last winter. Yeah. Not the winter when, before the interim year. Not when you talked to Hugh, but when you talked to Ross, what was said? Were you guaranteed anything? Well, what, did, was... what did they know about what was going on off the field? Because I think they suspected but didn't know. But you kind of have to know. Right? Oh, you absolutely. You can't fire somebody based on rumor. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's everybody talks about that all the time and kind of get criticized as raw, some of the people for that, but... From a contractual standpoint, it's so much more to know that, to be able to prove that. I mean, that, that's a high level of strict scrutiny. I mean, we hear rumors about Russell and how he has a yeah, a, kind of a, a thing with alien from outer space women and stuff. But Migrant we midgets from Moscow? Yeah, but we can't prove it. The one that I kind of have, and this isn't really necessarily salacious, it isn't salacious, but... It's interesting to me because he's always the dude back. Is Laramie Tunzel? You've been through all this stuff. Your stepdad's a psychopath. You, <laughs> I mean, everything from the Esquire to the Steve Ferris to the whole deal. And yet, out of Laquan and Robert and everybody, he's the guy always back on the sidelines. He's the person that basically sees Oxford as home. I just kind of like to get a perspective on that because. 
it's it, it's fascinating on a human on a personal level to me just how varied his career was here however his legacy seems very positive despite all the the turmoil if you will and he always just kind of comes back and hangs and all good it never seemed to phase him all the all, all, all the controversy and stuff it just I feel very confident. You asked Larry Tunzo, are you glad you played college football at Ole Miss? It's a yes. Oh, yeah. All good. Yeah. I well, because he, he did what he wanted to do. He wanted to go play college football in a town that wasn't completely crazy. That's, that, that's how Ole Miss won Laramie Tunzel. Everybody talks about all the Laramie Tunzel stuff. The bars closed earlier in the night, and his mother liked it better. Yeah. That's why they got Laramie Tunzel. So he does that, and then he's a top whatever draft pick. And anything that he was was, frankly, his fault. It's the irony of it is that there's this perception out there that Ole Miss paid him gobs of cash, and they didn't. They gave the dad 700 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They gave the stepdad 700 bucks. Lindsay was good about documenting it, too. So <laughs> yeah, was, I mean, that's what they gave him. I mean, don't, don't you think if there was a lot more, it would have come out somewhere? Yeah, I mean, that's what was funny is we talked about this on Thursday's podcast is we see the prices on James Wiseman. You know, three thousand a month, and then four thousand a month. Laramie got seven hundred bucks, and a rental car for a really long time. Yeah, he did get a rental car for a long time, and his and his stepbrother got a, or his half brother got, got a scholarship. scholarship. Who Russell thinks going to play in the NFL? By the way. Oh, stop it! Oh, you don't know that? Yeah, Russell thinks Alex Weber's an NFL wide receiver. When you say NFL, you mean National Football League? You're out of your mind. Yeah, you didn't know this? No. Yeah. I, how did I miss this? Yeah, it's been going on. Well, I mean, Ole Miss better be thankful Laramie brought Zedrick with him. I mean, in all honesty, kid <laughs> no plays doubt. every snap. You talk about it. That's a, the part of the deal that really paid off. Yeah, kid plays every snap. Miles Hartsfield had more snaps than Zedrick on Saturday. It's the first game this season that any defensive player had made played more snaps than Zedrick Woods. You know, in baseball, they'll have a player to be named later. Zedrick was sort of the player to be named yeah. later. That worked out. Oh, it was huge. He's the A-level kid that ended up winning 17 he will games. Have, he will have taken like four times the number of snaps as Laramie Tunzel on an SEC field. Oh, it's unbelievable. Because, I mean, Laramie plays three years, misses seven games, really yeah. misses eight because didn't he hurt his shoulder there at one point? Yeah, he, play he, a game? he basically played two and a quarter years. Yeah. Something like that. So, question here for uh, – you got a question? Go ahead. All right. Yeah. So, question here. Uh, that's a good one. I'm getting a Funky's Pizza yeah, for Carson tonight. That was the deal. What would you get? Uh, the frat boy. He oh, likes okay. all the meats. All the meats. Yeah, yeah. I got the buffalo chicken nachos earlier. They were really good. I they was, were uh, good. Yeah, I was really they impressed with the buffalo chicken nachos. Um, who are the offensive and defensive coordinators at Ole Miss in 2019? Oh, all right. I'll do it. You you want to go or you want me to go? I'll, I'll you want me to pick one and you pick one? I'll take my stab as of today and say. Wes I'll take offensive. You take defensive. And I'll, we'll I'll go do them way. both. I'll say Wesley McGriff and Dan Werner. That's actually my exact guess. Okay. How many people just said heart attacks as you said that? A lot. In multiple ways. I want to say again, as of today, underlined, italicized, bolded. November the 8th that. 6.15 p.m. Yes. Stuff yeah. could happen. Yeah, if you told me to lean one way or the other, I think Wesley's back. I agree completely. In the Werner thing, we've talked about it a little bit. What if I told you that I agreed completely? Stop. That was a little rude looking back. I mean, you, ha you have to admit that looking back, you, you created chaos because of the lack of context. Well, the timing wasn't great. I, I should have done it at a time when I was going to be on the Internet for the next six hours. <laughs> Instead, I got home and I poured a bourbon and I got into the games that I lost and time got away from me. The Dan Werner thing is interesting because Dan still has a house here. He would come back, and there's a lot of Ole Miss people that go, well, it's, it, it, it's retread, it's the same guy, Matt doesn't know everybody. But I really do feel like his scheme would fit Matt Luke well, and he would be a sounding board for Matt versus 
versus some young hotshot guy with some weird offense. I, I, I think Dan Warner fits this system and fits this th- th- this speck of time better than a lot of other guys would. Frankly, that that, that, that Matt could hire should Phil Longo move on to the to whatever's next with Phil Longo from maybe even a head coaching position. People ask us all the time, what do you think Matt Luke's ideal offense looks like? And I said the one that you did too, the one that South Carolina's running, that one. We were looking down on the field, we were like, that one. We'll take a break in this podcast to tell you that Christmas is right around the corner and Master Cuts wants to keep your home looking up to par through the holiday season. They offer a variety of outdoor Christmas decorations that will transform your house into a festive staple of the neighborhood. Everything from lighting and garland to inflatable characters Whatever your vision may be, they will design a custom display unique to your home. The best part, all the decorations you pay for, you own them. Master Cuts will keep and store your decorations so they're ready to go up next year, or you can store them yourself. The option is yours. So start a tradition with your family now. Call Master Cuts for a free quote at 662-607-7773. Also, sometimes you just need to get away. Sound familiar? Well, Oxford is your type, whether it's a getaway with girlfriends, a romantic trip for two, a guy's retreat, or simply just because. Traveling to Oxford means you can enjoy the great escape at your own leisure and not leave vacation in need of another vacation. You can find the full calendar of events at, at uh, www.visitoxfordms.com slash events to see that. Enjoy Oxford drawing some even not in needing reservations for these uh, game day weekends. So again, visit oxfordms.com. Also, Community Mortgage located in Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, and Chattanooga, one of the oldest mortgage companies in the southeast. Now, underwriting and processing is done in Memphis, so you're getting local underwriting and understands your market leader in condo financing and the float down option. So you can contact Jason Lowe at 662-234-2704 or JLo at communitymtg.com. Also, last but not least, get that flu shot now. It's a Friday. Walk-ins are welcome at GNM Pharmacy on South Lamar in Oxford. If you have a major insurance provider, it is free, if not $25, to take care of your health. Get rid of the flu before you get it with a flu shot from GNN Pharmacy. If you use them for all your pharmaceutical needs, they deliver local in the Oxford area and are conveniently located there on South Lamar. Now back to the show. There's just enough spread tendency to still be sort of pro style. It does a little bit of everything. It's multiple, a lot of motions. Has some tempo. But, yeah, the the ability to kind of run the football and I don't know. Who plays in more NFL games, Chad Kelly or Shea Patterson? Shea Patterson. You think Shea's an NFL quarterback? Does he play in one game? No, Chad's played in one. Okay. Oh, it's a good point. (sighs) Do you think Chad's going to get another opportunity? I hope so. Yeah, me too. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I, I'd have to know more information. They're kind of waiting on the season to end. I, I think it's possible there's some semblance of of Manziel route for him to go play somewhere else and hope for the best. Maybe as do this I thing think, moves forward. Yeah. Do I think Shea's an NFL quarterback? No. Do I think Shea gets an opportunity? Maybe. I mean, I, I watch some. You watch more NFL than I do, but I watch a good bit. There are some bad quarterbacks in the NFL. I mean, if you told me he got an opportunity for three games, I mean, crazier things, right? Okay. Question for both of us for you. What would have to happen for the Cubs to not pick up Anthony Rizzo's option after this season? He would either have to have a debilitating injury or a list of felony convictions. That's Otherwise, it. it's done. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what. No matter what. He's a Golden Glove first baseman who means so much to that city, so much to that franchise. He's a great guy. He's the captain of the team. Yeah. Question for me. This year, next year, is the is it the window for the Saints after next year? Breeze will be 41. Ingram will be 30 with the average running back wall being 29. Michael Thomas will have to be paid. And Cam Jordan will be 30. Yeah, the, look, the window goes as long as Drew Brees goes without regressing. And as we see in the NFL, the fall off at quarterback is so steep and so tremendous that it's simply how long he can be operating at this level. And then you start the whole rebuild. I mean, we had another question that said, look, if you got Brees in his prime for another seven seasons, like basically making a deal with you, 
Would you take that knowing that after those seven years, the Saints would not win another Super Bowl during my lifetime? Do I take it? So you're gambling seven year more chances with Breeze versus hopefully a very, very long time and decades moving forward without knowing who the quarterback is. It, it speaks so much to the status of the NFL and the difficulties of quarterback for that even to be a, a thought. But it was kind of a thought as I was, uh, as I was going through it. So I don't know. It's a good question. Drew Brees is just such a marvel. And then you see that – was it Instagram or Twitter last night, what he does with his kids? I'm cheering for him. I always try to tell myself I can't cheer for the Saints because of my childhood where I did not embrace the Saints. But I want them to win. Who's the next SEC coach fired due to a controversy? <laughs> Um, I'm thinking out loud. Gus Malzahn. <laughs> no, seriously. They're, they're, they're going to get hammered by George. They're going to get hammered by Alabama. Alan Green's already given something. them. They're going to find a way to not pay him that $30 million buyout. They are going to manufacture something stupid that Gus did to allow them to at least negotiate that thing. Like what though? Because I don't. That, think- that, that was such a rookie move by Alan Green to give him this weird vote of confidence. When Auburn's fan base has already shown they're a bunch of nut jobs, they're going to fire him after either a loss to Ole Miss or whatever, and they find a way to beat A and M. They've still got two kickings coming their way. They have no chance yeah. against Georgia or Alabama. Agreed. I think it's still very likely they fire him and they find some dumb reason to do it. But you have to have something with some substance well, to look, it. Well, Jay hasn't said they don't. I mean, Jay has given a little bit of credence to the possibility of there being just a flicker of something that they can rely on there. So the rumor is he hasn't completely fulfilled the letter of the, of the contract. Uh, whatever. As it pertains to, like, fundraising and stuff like that. But, man, that's, that's fishy. You got to try it when you owe, you owe a guy fifteen million dollars within thirty days. I mean, you you got to try it, but that's not like the Hugh Freeze thing where they had him. Is there is there another SEC job even open at the end of the year? So Barry Odom saved his job. I don't think Vanderbilt fires Derek Mason. I don't know why you would fire him. Who's going to do better? No, that's it. Everybody else is good. Unless somebody leaves for the NFL or something. Chad Morris is the worst team in the league, but they're year one, and they're recruiting pretty well. So you're not firing him. Matt Luke's year one or year two, depending on how you look at it. Everybody else has done okay. That's crazy for this league. You could have a year really where no one loses their gig. It really is, but I, I can't think of anybody that else is even remotely on the hot Maybe seat. Maybe could fire Mason. And they could, but let's not act like they're winning. Well, they're not, but they're probably going to finish with a couple of wins. I mean, they could beat Ole Miss at home. Could beat Tennessee. And they should beat Tennessee. And that's going to get them close. To, is that six wins for them? I don't know. I mean, six and six at Vanderbilt is a good season. So I, I got a deal for you here. If it meant you got Bryce Harper to the Cubs, would you eat a banana mayonnaise sandwich? For Bryce Harper? Yeah. How much mayonnaise? Coated. Both 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 slices of bread. And then the banana thickly cut in the middle. Bryce Harper would make Carson so happy. Mm, I think about it. It hurts my stomach. I would do it for Nolan Arenado. Do what? What? I would eat the sandwich for Nolan Arenado to really? be a cub. Yeah. Why him and not the other one? Uh, he's he's better than Bryce Harper. Your fan base is going to go crazy when this thing falls. Are they already? When he goes to Philly? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. What if he goes to St. Louis? He won't. That, that's kind of been announced today that they're out. Oh, did it really? Yeah. He's going to Philly or the White Sox. 
The White Sox is where the Cub fandom could potentially just go. Okay. But is Bryce Harper as good as he is? And I think he's great. Is he worth $400 million? Well, no. Of course not. I don't care what it is. Um, I've got a question I kind of hate to even read here. When Mike Bianco loses to uh, UNA (laughs) on Championship Monday, who's the coach in 2020? (laughs) I'm gonna t- I'm gonna take like bereavement, not just not just because Ole Miss, not not because of Ole Miss loss, just because I don't want to see anything close to a message board or a website or anything else for days and days and days and days. Like when Ross Bjork like announces his extension the next day or whatever, like it it, it will look like a nuclear bomb went off on our website. Yeah. I have a feeling it's this yeah. thing. Uh, I gotta tell you, I think I have a pretty proven track record of not being a homer. When the baseball postseason rolls around, I'll be the guy sitting over in the corner going, Hotty Toddy, please, please, come on. Let's keep morale at a, no. at a, at a, well, just, at a max I, here. I, I just don't want to have to manage this. If you offered me Mike Bianco getting to the College World Series right now, I'm in. You're all good? Yeah, just because people are insane. Blows our budget to smithereens, but it... it, it we'll it, figure that out. Yeah. The other is just... All right, question here, and this is something that, that, that I will allow Russell to answer on the message board at rebelgrove.com. But it says, uh, plenty of kids grow up in the shadow of a university. When it comes time for a college, I just want to go somewhere else. Your daughter, for example, likely going to the University of Arkansas. This guy's brother and himself. They got scholarship money. Knowing that, why is it necessarily a failure by Ole Miss if they don't get into Kobe Dean? Isn't it possible that it's no fault of the staff? He just simply wanted to go somewhere else? Yes, it's absolutely possible. It's not a failure. It's a failure by perception. It's losing Cam Akers. It's, you have this position of need, and you have a five-star talent in your state, and when you don't get him, the perception is failure. When the, if you're at Alabama and there's your one position of need is linebacker, and there's a five-star linebacker at Hoover, and you don't get him, people ask why. I still find it so interesting. And I mean, there's a lot of different reasons, and I don't necessarily know the answer. But and, and I get the early signing period is a lot of this. I mean, Russell's heard us talk about this as well. Is Everybody's kind of made their mind up on the Kobe, and I completely understand why I hear a lot of the same things. And, again, I've asked you this before, but – when it gets down to it, usually that in-state school makes this push and stuff just sort of happens. And it's one of the few times in covering or being around recruiting in the last 10 years where we don't even really hear that, that murmur in the back of the minds of, hey, okay, but just give it time. This stuff usually works itself out. And I can't really decide why he's that different kid from, from that regard. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't talked to him because Russell's covered it and – Russell's done a great job covering it. Usually that's what happens. You don't get the sense that that's I mean, in, in the cards this year. I mean, Tony Connor played with Alabama all the way through, and we laughed at it every day. Yeah. I went, yeah, okay, fine, yeah. whatever. Because we knew he'd end up at Ole Miss, and he did. Yeah. Um, and, and who knows? Maybe, Nick Brazel committed to state at one point. Yeah, and who, maybe things change. I just It doesn't feel that way, but maybe it does. I don't, I don't think it does. I think he's going to Georgia. Feel good about Georgia, Russell? He's nodding. So. And so if you're Ole Miss, you've got to make up you've got to make up for that by getting other linebackers. Now the difference between the former head coach and this head coach is I think the former head coach would just keep recruiting Nicobe Dean. And this staff will continue to recruit Nicobe Dean, but they have a plan B. Because you gotta get bodies. You gotta get people. They're going to sign 32, 33 kids, something like that. During the period, they're going to be back up to 85 for next year. Ole Miss gets all the scholarship numbers back. You know what I mean? From a, from a talent standpoint, it probably still has a little bit to go. But from a sheer number standpoint, the probation will be completely over at that point, and, and, and they'll have a full roster. I've said this for a while. They wake up on the morning of November the 23rd for the first time in a long time as a 
regular football program. Young. I mean, they, they will be a very young roster. Lots of freshmen, lots of sophomores, but 85 of them. Let's close here. Ole Miss basketball against Western Michigan Saturday afternoon. You can, uh, you can watch the football game and then immediately get over to the basketball game if you so wish for that. In the early, in the early season, they've got the home game. They've got the road game at Butler. They've got some, some tests. Baylor's pretty early in that. I think Baylor's early enough that Mario Kegler is going to be suspended. He suspended oh. the first four games of the season for, uh, for the Bears. So I do think they'll miss Mario Kegler, the former Callaway standout. For, Scott uh, Drew's a hell of a recruiter. I mean, people love Waco. They do. It's the shopping malls in Waco that have made such oh, a difference. Oh, they're so beautiful. So, forget winning. We know that. Duh. What's the most important things to see from this Kermit Davis basketball team in the early going? Um, play hard. Um, play with Show pa- a lot of effort in that one three one. Play with passion. Um, ball movement. Uh, defensive focus. Third and fourth efforts on defensive possessions. Um, running an offense, staying within the offense, um, and improving over the course of the year. The team that you look at in February and March looks different than the team that you see in November. That's outside of winning. That's, that's how you judge them. And look, K.J. Buffin and Blake Henson are both going to be really fun players to watch. And that doesn't mean that Luis Rodriguez or Franco Miller or those guys won't be. I just haven't seen enough of them. It doesn't mean that Zach Naylor or, or uh, Brian Hallams won't be. Just haven't seen enough of them. But those two kids uh, are, are really good. And then, you know, I mean, those of us who have covered Terrence Davis would love to see him do well. Those of us who have covered Dominic Olenichik, who's a great kid who had a terrible year and just let it absolutely kill him. Love to be, see him do well. So it, it'll be there's they're an interesting team for them to win at the level that you know Andy talked about this for them to get to 500 in the league and be in the mix. They're just going to have to have some help and when and when they have opportunities, they have to capitalize. They can't let games get away that they have won. For example. Thanks to all the listeners. Thank to Blue Delta Jeans for jo- for helping us out. The trivia question again: Stop in. They've got the new corduroys that uh, Neil's been eyeing for a while. You can go in. You can see those and get great service, lifetime alterations, and custom fit for you. I think you're measured 16 different ways to make sure it is the perfect fit. We have got a beer garden coming out in the morning too, so you'll uh, you'll get that. A full week of podcast from MPW Digital, and then coverage of Ole Miss sports. Heading into the weekend, Texas A&M, 11 o'clock on Saturday. The basketball team against Western Michigan that afternoon. So thanks, everybody, for coming out. Hope you enjoyed the specials and more. We'll talk to you again next week.